The knowledge broker, it starts with the data, it starts with knowing your market better than anybody else. But then it's the, the next level that those, those agents in any market that you can point to that are like, wow, they get so many listings. They've gone to the next level with the relationships. They've spent time with these people, lunches, coffees, whining and dining, uh, maybe, you know, showing up at a, at a picnic with these individuals. And it's so strong. And, and, uh, the company that I mentioned in Connecticut, the owner was a former vet and, or was a vet and started this company. And he, um, you know, I created a great relationship with him, but I used to actually go to the property when he would be, you know, figuring out what stays and what goes. And then I would actually go to the property during the day he was removing stuff. I've done an open house during an estate, estate sale. Uh, you know, you talk about these mega open houses where hundreds of people, do an estate sale where you're selling 25 cent trinkets and you're going to have every Tom, Dick and Harry in your market walking through that house and be able to hand out a bunch of flyers. I was also at a property talk about great social content. This is like probably even before Instagram, he was craning out of the property, a $275,000 piece of art. It was like a, uh, I don't know. It was like a dinosaur foot or some nonsense. It was like an artifact like this big clay thing. And he had to lift it out of the home. And, you know, you just spend time there and create these deep relationships that are going to bear fruit in the future for anybody that's going to be in this thing for the next five, 10, 15 years. These are the relationships that are so important uh, to start to create. It doesn't happen. Listen, it doesn't happen by handing somebody your business card. I'm so sick of this. People thinking that the number. a re a, re a relationship starts with handing your business card. You haven't even begun. That's not even 1% of the equation. Oftentimes when I'm handed a business card, it immediately goes into the trash bucket the, the minute the person turns around because you've created a job for me to input your data into my CRM that I don't want. I don't want that job. You hand a business card and walk away. I, I think you're an asshat. I I'm just not going to respect that move. So don't worry about the business card. Worry about creating a, a deep relationship, finding commonalities, and then using those commonalities and, and those mental notes or notes that you've taken in your phone as the opportunity for the follow-up, just yeah. like you would with a client. It, well, they are clients, right? Like that, I think that that's how you have to look at it, though, is anybody that you're willing to give a business card to is a client of some level. Uh, and it's it's all relationships. Business cards are not that. No, business cards are not that. All right. So we kind of went off path there, but I think that was a valuable segment for, again, knowledge brokers, attorneys, and anybody consulting people in the housing industry cer certainly value there. And maybe something you're not thinking about with um, the seniors. And thanks to Lisa putting a dress on for the first time in 18 months, we were able to bring you that segment. So, to, uh, <laughs> Tom, where do we want to go next on the. What, what you're talking about here, and I, I want to give a case study real quick. And, and this happened to me over the weekend because, um, you know, people like, and you know, I use business cards to pick my teeth sometimes. So I'm with you, Byron. I think that's a good use for them, especially if you get the glossy ones. Uh, but uh, if if you're in the arena and like people like they they're gonna know you're a real estate agent if you're doing your job, right? Like people always ask, like, how's work? What's going on? So if they want to talk about real estate, they're gonna talk to you about it. If they don't, they're not going to. And if you can just give some sort of data and some sort of piece of value to folks, it's actually valuable. That's way better than a business card. So I had a, a neighbor approach me when I'm walking my dog over the weekend, ask me like, what's going on with this home up the street? And I told him my take on it. And there was another home the next street over that sold. And I shot them an email and not to be inv invasive, just, Hey, Hey, Karen, here's what happened with this house. Blah, blah, blah. We talked about this on the follow-up webinar. And as, pr as promised per yeah. our conversation of, of the little, poodle walk yeah and it's a french bulldog uh but uh it's uh real, real tough dog byron loved the dog lisa saw the reaction yeah, yeah. um Psychotic. so but literally hey this home was listed at x it sold in three days reinforces my take on the place up the street have an awesome day just following up as promised nothing nothing crazy they then write back and say hey we might want to buy this house and we have a meeting just because and i've you know, met these people in my yard, like it's not, we haven't been living there that long, but giving one piece of market data that makes it look like you know what you're talking about and sending it to them in a professional manner, instead of saying, here's my business card, I live across the street. Oh, 
that, that wins, right? They got kids that are downsizing or upsizing. One of them just had a baby. Like there, there's business to be done there, but I just made myself look competent. Any agent can do this. You look in the MLS, you send a piece of data and you follow up with them and you make it casual and use some of those Phil Jones magic words. You're good to go. This isn't rocket science here.